Dr. Ellen Dickstein, and I'm here with self-realization author Guy Finley. We're going to talk about his new book, The Seeker, The Search, The Sacred, which is being published by Red Wheel Wiser. Guy, you have said that you have been working on this book for 30 years. So what is the message in this book that has been alive in you for so many years? The Seeker, the Search, the Sacred is a book that I say has been alive in me for 30 years, but the truth is this book and its content has been alive since the beginning of time. And I think that the content lives in the heart of every human being on the earth. The basic idea is that everywhere in the world, whenever it's taken place, individuals are touched by something that transcends their individual life, that goes deeper than any thought can possibly go and brings up in that person an understanding about a relationship with life that goes way past their conditioning, their traditions, and all of those things associated with that. And when that happens in a human being, that individual is changed. That becomes a different kind of person. And those individuals who are so touched that way by spirit, they themselves become the, 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 the next uh, leg of, you know those uh, races where they hand the baton off? I call it seeds of fire and footprints in the sand. Because little by little, this living message that within each and every one of us exists the same divine life called throughout time by all these different names and that to understand the existence of this divine intelligence apart from the name it's been given is the only way in which a certain kind of healing can take place on this world. So that which has been alive in me for 35 years or 30 years or whatever it is is the same thing that's been living in the hearts and minds of human beings who for some reason or another thought to themselves, you know, there ought not be this kind of hatred and fear and worry in this world. And maybe there's a reason and maybe there is a reality that sits underneath all of that whose life really never begins and never ends. So 30 years is a pretty short span of time <laughs> <laughs> considering something that never begins and never ends. But that's why this has been living in me for 30 years because it's about life itself and anyone that discovers anything about real life becomes the instrument of it. Yes. You say something stunning in the introduction. You say every truth discovered already exists in our consciousness, which is connected to what you were just saying. Yes. So how is it that we've lost touch with such an essential part of our own nature, and how can we recover it? First, to touch on the idea, everyone knows, even if they've never become conscious of it, that when they see something beautiful or they discover a truth of some kind, they have an epiphany, that in that moment, it isn't like, oh my God, that's so new, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. In that moment, it's a remembrance of something that has been sitting somewhere inside of the human being for all of that time. The relationship with that timeless part of ourselves has been replaced by a host of purposes created by our culture and our conditioning that all have to do with pursuits in time. And it's quite the contrast because in one world, if you understand the idea that everything that was ever created, made in the image of the divine, already sits inside of a human being. So what am I looking for? What am I doing with all of my pursuits in time if the timelessness itself that gave me birth is in me? So little by little, a substitution took place. 
And instead of understanding the necessity of being present to myself first for the purpose of being the conscious instrument of this divine, timeless life, our life has become one increasingly dedicated to pursuits in time so that we can feel good about ourselves. The book helps to point out that it's possible to return to ourselves and in a manner of speaking really return to this higher reality that is the, 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 the foundation of our true nature. Mm -hmm. Yes, you say that there is an element that we all feel is missing from our lives and that it's the central urge of every human being to find that element. Yeah. What is it? What is it that's missing? I believe I, I use a quotation in the book from Whitman that the central urge of every atom is to return to its divine source. You know, if, if we ever really stop for a moment long enough to be present enough, what we discover is that there's just this constant feeling of gotta go, gotta do, gotta get. But we never examine the source of that, that dynamic energy that, put, that wants to push us out into the world of time. Because the, the root of that urge really sits within this capacity we have in which we can realize we already are merged with something that is timeless and whole. So when we, when we speak of this this, this rush really to become something, it flies in the face of what we already are, the possibility we have as a human being to possess ourselves. So the central urge that all of us feel really is to find ourselves. But we can't find ourselves until we are ourselves. Well, let's talk a little bit more about this seeker. How do we encourage it? How do we let it be free to seek? It seems like everything in the world is pulling us away from this higher aim. Well, first, you don't have to do anything to encourage <laughs> the seeker. You look around, human beings running a thousand miles an hour <laughs> seeking everything under the sun. This is, a, a, to me, a really beautiful idea it's one of my favorite. The reason that we seek relationships, no matter what they are, high and low, is because innate in us is an understanding that through that relationship we will discover something about ourselves. It is really the driving force behind all the things that we dedicate ourselves to, good or bad in this world, is that Without knowing it, something says, you know, if you do this, get that, go there, be involved with this person, they're going to serve as a very distinct kind of mirror for you. And in that mirror, you're going to be able to find out things about qualities and character inside of you that you cannot find out any other way. And so we are seekers. The problem is, that we don't understand the nature of the present seeker because we believe the possibilities of ourselves as human beings all hinge on what this mind seeks relative to its conditioning and the culture that it's been a part of. But the beauty of it is, is that, and who doesn't know this, at some point, you do this, you go there, you get that. And yes, you're revealed to yourself, but then you find out through all of that revelation something's still missing. And the day comes, and it's a glad day, when a person starts to understand that what I really long to do isn't to find something new to want and get. I want to understand this wanter inside of me, this thing that always feels incomplete, and begin to challenge it, not on the basis of some spiritual ideal, but on the process of having gone through a negation of recognizing all these years, all these pursuits, and basically I'm still empty. So if I ever get to that point, 
then I can begin to understand maybe all of that seeking has served a purpose that the present level of seeker could never have understood because it brought me to a realization that can only come through negation. Mm -hmm. And that's when a completely new kind of search begins. Absolutely. That's when the, you could say that's when the real search begins. Mm -hmm. Because until then, to say it in, in the simplest terms that I know how to do, until then, it isn't really you seeking. We, we don't think about this much, but where, where on earth did any of us get the idea about what it means to be a successful person? In fact, worse than that, most of us are looking for someone to tell us what it means to be a successful person. Because we've done all these other things, we didn't become successful. And by successful, I mean at peace with yourself. Present to yourself. Aware of the infinite number of possibilities that exist when instead of running after something, you're aware of the part of you that wants to go off on the chase. Then a different kind of life appears. Because now you're not searching for something outside of yourself to make you feel whole and complete. Now you understand that the search must begin within and it must conclude within, but that everything without serves the purpose of that by revealing to you the misunderstanding about who you are and how to make yourself whole. So search becomes a completely different activity for a human being. You get to do all of this searching, and basically, even though you still do all the things you do in life, you never leave home. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the seeker. We've talked about the search. Let's talk a little bit about the sacred. Wars have been fought over what people mean by the sacred. Yes. How do you see the sacred? First, I think it's very important to, to, to make it clear. The sacred isn't anything that can be thought about. If people just understood that, war would come to an end. Mm -hmm. The ideals, all of the belief systems, the traditions built out of the belief systems, all of that very, very uh, deeply entrenched conditioning that the way I feel when I think about my God is the same as a relationship with God has put men and women on this planet at each other's throats for thousands and thousands of years. Because I don't care what religion you talk about, even those that don't acknowledge the existence of a, of a divine uh, being, in quotes, the root of them is love. Not separation, not distinction, not difference. Yes, each religious uh, uh, tradition brought forward is, is, is replete with the cultural mandates that were part of the creation of that religion at its time. But when you separate all of that business out, you have individuals in every corner of the world who were touched by something that could not be touched by the human mind. And it was the touch of that sacred that instilled in them what then became the groundwork, the foundation of whatever system was born afterwards. And the system that's born from the touch of the divine is not the same thing as the touch of the divine. It's a, it's a symbol of it. And when symbol becomes source, violence takes place. Okay, in just the last few minutes, what is the most important message that you want readers to take away from the seeker, the search, the sacred?
I suppose it'll sound a little strange at first. What I really want them to take away from this at the outset is the understanding that you don't know who you are and that all of the pain that any of us have in this life is born out of being identified with a host of ideas about who we are, what our purpose is, what we're here on this planet to do with one another. That all of that is, in all of that is, it has covered up something that if we could just touch that, if we could just begin to doubt our own dark states, then out of that doubt, or out of that, that rediscovery that, look, I'm not my anxiety. You're not your worry. You're not your nervousness. You're not your regrets and your resentments. You're not the person that sits at the dinner table at a holiday uh, gathering and is worried whether somebody's going to approve what you've done with your life up to this point. You're none of those things. Yes, all of those things are part of a story. But the purpose of the book and all of the information in it is to educate an individual that these smaller stories, your life, my life, these smaller stories belong to a much broader, grand story. And that it's only when we understand our relationship to the larger story, the divine story, and our role in it, and the purpose that comes from that role, is it possible that all of the pain and and violence that occurs can go away. Because then, when we know who and what we are, we're no longer trying to prove ourselves to anyone or anything. So what I want a person to take away from this book is the understanding that who and what you've been up until this point in time is really just a a bit of ground out of which something can grow. That has no fear in it. That doesn't compare itself to anyone or anything and that knows without thinking about it that it's taken care of. Well, that's certainly what all human beings want. I think so. The book, again, is The Seeker, The Search, The Sacred. Thank you, Guy. You bet. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you for joining us. (laughs) ¶¶